Well, they say that clothes do not make the man, and that we shouldn't judge people based solely on their appearance. But what if clothes do make the man, that they affect his psychology in such a way as to influence his very being? Tonight's story explores this very notion, and it's another deliciously evil one for you. So, I hope you'll all do me one little favor. Sit back and relax with your favorite drink, because now it's time to listen. Jared had just finished tying the tie when he reflected on how he came into this amazing fortune. He didn't believe his luck even then, and he definitely didn't believe it when he found the suit in the consignment store down on 5th. He'd been going there for the past while, trying to drown the feelings of inadequacy and despair that had been plaguing him. A year out of university, still couldn't find anything past retail. And add to that, the woman who he wanted to marry leaving him. It wasn't good. He reflects on how around that time, he'd started thinking about leaving everything behind one day, one way or another. Either by up and leaving this country, or leaving this world through the morgue. Either appealed to him equally. The suit, though. The suit. Sleek. Black, slim and practically shiny, just hanging there in the back row of the back of that old thrift store. The one that constantly smelled like the 1970s, and that looked about as much. He'd been browsing idly, no intention of buying anything, just trying to see all the neat things that were there while he imagined himself <laughs> buying something. It might sound odd, but it was comforting in a weird way. And then, then, he saw it, brushing his fingertips along the arm of it, tasting the fabric with his touch. He was struck by how soft and light it all felt. As he looked at it, he imagined himself wearing it, how professional and how great he'd look. Try walking into an interview with that on. That was when he knew he had to have it. He felt it deep in his bones. He glanced at the price tag and cringed. It cost a bunch. Way more than you'd expect from a place like this. Still though, it took him about an hour to get home on transit with the suit. He headed straight home without making any detours. He was that eager to try the suit on for the first time. Getting home at around 5.30 in the evening, he quickly got into his apartment, shut and locked the door, and then practically raced into his bedroom. There was something about this suit. He just had to have it on him. Had to see what it was like. Within minutes, he'd stripped down to his underwear and was then putting the suit on. First, the exceptionally thin black dress socks. Then the pants that fit him just right, not too tight or too saggy. The belt with the plain, pure silver buckle. The dress shirt with its barely visible patterns woven into the fabric. The tie with its criss-cross patterns of grey silver bars. And finally, the jacket. Dark, foreboding, intimidating and impeccably professional. With the suit on, he stood back and looked himself over in the mirror. As he looked on, he felt himself fill up inside with joy and pride. He looked amazing. The suit fit him to a T, and not just that, but vastly enhanced not just his appearance, but he could just feel. There was a vibe he gave off. 
He also felt how he looked. He wasn't some schmuck who couldn't get a job with his BA, or who got abandoned by the woman he loved more than anything. No, he was a real man. A real piece of work who would grab the world by the horns and make it submit to him instead of the other way round. Anyways, he'd finished trying it on, more or less. So now was the time to take it off, hang it all up, and save it for a special occasion. Unless... He couldn't, he found. He just couldn't. This was just too good a suit to have it just hanging in the closet for the next few months, or however long it took for him to get a job interview. He had to show it off, really impress the world. Before he knew it, his mind was made up. Yeah, he'd take it out for a night on the town. An hour and a half later, he was strolling down Main Street in the downtown core. The moon was hanging high in the air, with the glitzy and glamorous lights of the street and of the stores aligned along the sidewalks punctuating the darkness. The sidewalks were abuzz with people of all sorts, from all walks of life. Hippies, business people, students of all age ranges and more. The city was alive, and Jared loved it. More than that, Jared was alive too in a way he never had been before, moving amidst the crowd of people in a brisk stroll through this urban nightscape. Jared felt like a king. The suit made him feel empowered. It made him feel like he could do anything, be anything, accomplish anything. His heart thundering with power, and his body pulsing with barely contained energy. The suit made him feel like he was the man he dreamed of being his entire life. Someone in charge. Someone people respected and admired. If only Marcy had respected him that way. His thoughts drifted over to Marcy and everything he'd given for her. Her shy, almost nervous look that concealed a powerful self-confidence and the sheer energy with which she tackled life and everything in it. Their bodies tangled together, naked and sweaty, in the middle of the night, as the sound of their breaths filled the bedroom they both occupied. But then, it ended. No fanfare, no drama. She said she just wasn't satisfied, and left. Word on the street a week later was that she'd already found someone new. A stockbroker named Andrew. Jared had then looked him up on the popular social media network that he liked to use. <sighs> he was good looking. Had it together. Looking at his photo, he hoped he'd make Marcy happy. To say he was shattered over the breakup was putting it mildly. But he dealt with it. He didn't beg her to come back because he knew she never would. No, he just accepted it. Now, though, now he was angry. Which was odd, because he'd never felt anger toward her before, even with the pain she'd brought him. After all, he wasn't entitled to her love. He knew that much right off. Even still, with the suit on and him feeling like the champion that he now knew he finally was, he found indignation rising in him. Who the hell did that bitch think she was anyways? Stealing those years of his life. And for fucking what? Just to run off with some asshole. As he finished crossing the street on 18th, Jared's eyes widened and he became vividly aware of the beating of his heart. What was going on? He'd never thought of Marcy that way before. He realized, though, that he was angry. Not even just angry, but furious. Forcing himself to keep walking, it all flooded into him. This world, this miserable fucking world 
with all of its bullshit people and its bullshit systems. Maybe it would be good if this whole damn shit pile was drowned in nuclear fire, he thought to himself. So, there he was, walking the town and feeling his fury rise more and more inside of him. As he walked, he tried to keep himself under control, keep his emotions level. He couldn't, though. He felt as if he wanted to kill someone, as if he needed to vent his anger somehow. Something was changing him, that much he was sure of, but he didn't know what. Trembling with rage, he walked and walked, and as he did, something dawned on him. He was realizing that he was hot, just too damned hot. Wiping his brow with the back of his hand and loosening his tie, his eyes darted around where he was. He needed to get something to drink, needed to cool off. Finally, he spotted it, a bar. Yeah, he could get some water from there, and then start to head home. Half a minute later, he was in the bar and talking to the bartender. Hey, can I get some water? I'm fucking parched. Jared rasped, his throat scratchy. The bartender cocked an eyebrow, but after a moment, nodded. As Jared waited, he wiped his brow again. This time it was actively damp. He began drumming the wood of the bar with his fingers as he waited for the bartender to get back with his water. As he did so, he realized that he could barely control his anger. Sooner or later, he'd go off on someone. He needed to, he was realizing. As he was starting to worry about this, the bartender got back with a damp glass of water with some ice cubes in it. Jared smiled eagerly, nodded in thanks, and grabbed the glass and began to drink from it. As the cold water hit his tongue, and then raced down his throat in huge, desperate gulps, it was as if Jared's entire body breathed a sigh of relief. That was it, yes, that was it. Just what he needed. His body started to cool down, as his throat got more and more lubricated, and, oddly enough, his emotions began to level out too. After another minute or so, the water was gone, and Jared felt himself to be more cooled down, and more level. With that, he turned to leave and began to walk toward the exit. As he moved, a person coming into the bar, short, skinny, curly-haired and with a mousy face, with a young woman by his side, blonde hair, early twenties looking, probably the guy's girlfriend, bumped into him, and as he did so, shoved him to the side with his arm. While he did this, he snidely snapped at Jared to watch where he was going before turning to his girlfriend and laughing about it. Jared had felt level. But well, that changed. He began to think, You miserable mother f But didn't finish his thought, before he deftly reached over to a nearby table, grabbed hold of a wine bottle by its neck, and, as hard and fast as he could, smashed it over the man's head. The glass exploded as it impacted with his head and the man immediately tumbled forward and then collapsed to the ground in a heap. As Jared stared down at the man's body, he noticed it lay motionless. The woman quickly dropped to her knees and began yelling. Johnny! 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 Can you hear me? Her voice was fraught with fear and despair. She was really scared she might lose him, Jared thought. He didn't stick around to find out for sure, though. By the time half a minute had passed, he was a block and a half down the street, his feet smacking the pavement as he pushed himself to run as hard as he possibly could. Finally, when he was a good distance away, he slowed down, leaning against a wall. 
Panting hard, he glanced back at the way he'd come. An idiot grin on his face. When he'd started his night on the town, he'd felt alive and he felt like a king. Now, he felt like a god. That miserable piece of fucking garbage, Jarrett thought to himself. Try to fuck with me, did he? He replayed the events over in his mind, and, as he did so, started to giggle wildly. <laughs> he was so damned happy. He'd never felt like this before. In charge. Powerful. Dominating. As he soaked up the power and assurance of those feelings, he, oddly, felt his bitterness rise in concert, his eyes casting a wide glance over the people passing him by, back and forth. He found himself wanting to strangle each and every one of them, and as he did so, he felt something akin to hunger. He needed to do something to vent his anger. To be the man this suit had made him into. He had no idea what was causing him to change like this. Nor would he ever. Even when the change had finished its imprinting onto him once and for all. It was hard to describe what he was feeling. It was sheer, raw fury. Along with a desire to hurt. Very quickly, Jared had decided he would commit some form of harm tonight. Part of him, a very small part, was begging him not to, as he leaned on the wall, panting. He didn't listen to this, though. He couldn't. He felt the thirst like he'd never had before. Not just that, but that which was changing him was feeling an even stronger thirst. Needing to be fed from Jared, and feed it he would. Jared realized what his course of action would be when he saw a certain someone pass him. White button-up shirt tucked into his grey suit pants. Cell phone to his ear. Grin on his face. It was Andrew. The same Andrew that took Marcy from him. Jared felt rage rise within him. Yes, but that wasn't what filled his mind. Filled his being. What did fill his mind and being was a singularity of purpose. A conviction, even. And before he knew it, he was following Andrew, waiting for the right moment. He followed him for seven blocks before Andrew, checking his phone and furrowing his brow, ducked into an alleyway. Now, Jared knew this particular alleyway. It was a helpful shortcut to the nearest subway station. Smiling eagerly, Jared followed Andrew into the alleyway. What happened in that alleyway was neither nice or wholesome in its description. What is worth noting is that Andrew never noticed Jared until it was too late, and that he never even had a chance to scream. Jared was on him so fast. The punches eventually landed with thick, wet smacks to Andrew's face. And finally, for the coup de grace, Andrew's skull split open like a ripe melon with a satisfying crack as Jared smashed it into the cement ground over and over as hard as he could. Andrew's brains collapsed out onto the ground beneath him, resting now in a pool of thick, dark blood. As for Jarrett, well, he was panting hard, his heart pounding massively with sheer excitement and joy. It wasn't just that it was satisfying killing Andrew, it's that it felt like it's what he was made for. As well, he now had a taste for it. He had a taste of he knew not what, but a kind of high that he knew he would need again and again. This would be repeated, he was sure. What he didn't know is that it would happen again because what had changed him, what had been changing him this entire night, had now been fed and would feed again. 
As he stood up, the front of his suit was stained all over with blood. Nonetheless, this didn't bother him. He began to move toward the exit of the alleyway. As he stepped out into the street, there wasn't a speck of blood on him. Not one. He got home after about an hour. He stripped off his clothes, got into bed, and slept the best sleep he'd had in years. As he drifted off into dreams, he knew, deep down, that he'd wear the suit again. He had to. He didn't have a choice in the matter. He was even a tiny bit aware of that. Then the day would come when it would need to feed again, and he would feed it. Oh, how he would feed it. In exchange, he would feel like the god he knew he was always meant to be. The suit hung there in his closet, and as it did, inside of its own consciousness, it laughed viciously. So, quite an interesting little concept for you there in that story. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Wow, it's Friday already, can you believe it? Wishing you all a fantastic weekend. And guess what? That's right, yes, I'll be back with you all again on Monday. So I do hope you'll join me. But for now, bye-bye.